Welcome to our Pure Competition Model Blackboard Discussion Number 4. We're going to put everything together today, right now. This is how this works. We have a market. It has a demand and a supply curve like this. Price, quantity, which gives us an equilibrium price we'll say of $3. This is the market for, we'll call it wheat. $3 a bushel here. This is what we're concerned with is this company over here. This is just an average typical company that makes wheat. Company A we're calling it. Price, quantity. This company takes this price. That's how we get the three dollars and it's a price taker and that three dollars is equal to its marginal revenue. Fair enough. Now this marginal revenue is giving us an idea of how much money it could make if it produces a certain quantity. But we've gone beyond that. And we're going to say, look, we can also figure out its costs. We look at its average total cost like this. And we can also look at its average or marginal cost. Now we know the marginal cost line goes down and then up and hits the average total cost line at its minimum and comes up like this and we have marginal cost. Now you're going to really have to start thinking here because now what you're going to do is consider okay what's going to happen? How is this firm going to maximize profits? This thing means profits. Well it's going to look at its total revenues minus total cost but we know it's going to maximize its profits by equating marginal costs with its marginal revenues. So step one find where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Where is that? Well, here's marginal cost. Here's marginal revenue. This is where they're equal right there. So what do we do? We say, well, first step, marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Step two is to find the quantity. Let's see. So how much should I produce? Well, I come down here and I find the quantity here. Let's call that 27 bushels of wheat. Check. We've done these two things. What is step three? Well, step three really is calculating out our actual profits or losses. We know how to do that. We did that last time. How much does it cost to produce 27 units of wheat? Well, you don't go up to the marginal cost line because that gives you how much it costs to produce the 27th unit. You go to the average total cost line. On average, it costs this much. You go all the way over here. It looks like that's about $2.75 is the cost. We've got our clue now, don't we? This rectangle here is how much it costs. Well, $2.75. How much do we get per unit? $3 per unit. We're getting $3. It's costing us $2.75. So we have cost is the small rectangle. And guess what? Revenue is the big rectangle. So the difference is going to end up being this rectangle here. And that particular rectangle is equal to the company's profits. That's how you maximize profits. For this company, this rectangle represents the largest amount of profits it could make in this purely competitive market. That's how it works. That's how we figure it out. Let's do this again. <clears throat> this time we're going to focus in on one particular company and we're going to look at what those profits might be like. Sorry about that. We're going to look at this one particular company here and figure out again its profits, kind of just for practice. Here's a quantity, here's a price. Here's that supply and demands over there somewhere. It's giving us this three dollars as the market price we have to take and that gives us this straight marginal revenue line at $3. Again, 
We now have to figure out some kind of cost situation. And what we're going to do this time is figure out our average total cost. But look what we're going to do. We're going to draw it slightly different this time. It's going to just nick that marginal revenue line there, average total cost. Now we're going to look at the marginal cost line. And it goes like this and hits the average total cost line at a minimum again, marginal cost. We're going to figure out how to maximize profits and we're going to look at total revenue minus total cost. But what do we do? Marginal cost equals marginal revenue. That's our key. Marginal revenue equals price. This is the moment here. Marginal revenue equals marginal cost here. Well, let's figure out our profits then. What are our profits going to be? Well, let's see. This is how we figure out the quantity. Step one, we figure out the quantity. Let's call that 20 two units and for this particular company we'll call this company B looks like they make 22 units and what is their cost well you go from 22 up to average total cost find out it's that rectangle what are its revenues well you go from 22 up to the marginal revenue line and what do you get the same three dollars it turns out that its average total costs and its rev marginal revenues are the same so what is this big box equal? It equals its total costs and it equals its total revenues. So what do we end up with this special condition? We end up where profits, economic profits, that's going to come important in the future, are equal to zero. Its economic profits are zero. Now if you remember our discussion about economic profits, does that mean this company shuts down? No, it's covering its implicit costs as well, the return to the entrepreneur. So these cost lines incorporate that implicit cost idea. So when economic profits are zero, this company does not shut down. This is an important moment we'll find out for the pure competition model. Let's move on and draw this one more time. This time what we're going to do is we're going to draw another company here, same market, another company. We'll call this company C, and we'll see how they function. Price, quantity. Now again, the marginal revenue is $3. The marginal revenue looks like this. This is given to this company by the market. The market equilibrium price is $3. What else do we have to figure out? We have to figure out the costs. Well, let's see. What's this going to be like? Well, we'll draw an average total cost line like this. Uh oh, already we can see we're in trouble. Look how high that average total cost line is. That doesn't look good, does it? Now let's see what our marginal cost line looks like. Our marginal cost line is going to look something like this. Marginal cost. And now we move forward. Okay, what is this guy's profits going to be? Well, as we look at this, we're thinking to ourselves, hmm, how do we figure out the quantity? Well, do we come up? No, wait, what the? Oh yeah, we go where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That gives us the quantity we should produce. Why? Because we want to keep producing all of these units where the marginal revenue is greater than the marginal cost. We don't want to produce these units where marginal cost is greater than marginal revenue. So remember, step one, find out the quantity. Let's figure out that quantity here. Let's say it's 17. What are the revenues of producing 17 units? Well, we go up to the marginal revenue line and it's this rectangle here. What are the costs of producing 17 units? Well, we go up to not the marginal cost line, but the average total cost line. Remember that. And we go over here and find out what the average total cost is. Looks like about $3.20. Now, we have the costs are greater than the revenues. And we have a rectangle like this that looks like it's going to be a loss. Now, that's not a good situation for a company to be in, is it? As a matter of fact, the pure competition model says when a company suffers losses, um, they're in the long run possibly going to get out of the business. If a company's got profits, let's see if we can grab this profits diagram here. If the company is going to be getting profits like this, guess what happens? More companies try to be like this company because more companies want to make profits. 
diagrams. See you in Pure Competition Blackboard Discussion 5, the final one.